Welcome to today's presentation on attention getters and clinchers. Every presentation should aim to look like this. An equilateral triangle where one side of the triangle is a very strong message and another side of the triangle is very strong delivery and the final side of the triangle being very strong visuals. I'm sure you can recall a time when you heard a presentation and the content was good, the delivery was good, but the visuals were just not engaging. Aiming for an equilateral triangle will help you have a successful presentation. In review, we would like every presentation to look like this. The introduction is an inverted triangle and is about 20% of your speech. It starts with a very broad attention getter and then narrows your focus that leads to the star, which is your thesis sentence or your controlling idea of your body. Following that is the body, which is about 65% of your speech. And concluding is the 15% of your speech, which, as you recall, does a short review, perhaps talks about significance, but then ends on a high note with some sort of clincher. We like to liken this pattern to if you were planning a meal. We recommend when planning a meal or planning a speech that you start with the body or what your main dish is going to be. Perhaps it's going to be enchiladas. Once you decide your main dish or your body, it becomes easier to go back and to do your introduction or to think about what your appetizer might be, say chips and salsa, and then to finally think of ways to conclude or offer a dessert, and maybe that might be churros or flan. But starting with the main meal can often lead to really great ideas of appetizers and desserts. Similarly, starting with the body can often lead to creative ways to gather one's attention and conclude when presenting. So often, we have been taught to do a presentation in this linear format that looks like this snake where we think of the introduction and we write it and then we write our main points and our transitions and our details and our citations and then we finally wrap it up and conclude. This can be a recipe for disaster and often leads to struggles when trying to be creative in an attention getter and a clincher. Consider thinking of a presentation in a circular sort of fashion like this, where the moment you think of your attention getter or your snake's head, you are thinking about how you might wrap it up on a high note or your snake's tail. In review, when talking about the introduction, we would want to include these three elements. Obviously the attention getter, some background information, and then the thesis. For this particular presentation, we're going to focus on ways to get one's attention creatively in presentations or the snake's head. We will also focus on the clincher or what one might find in a conclusion or the snake's tail. So just how do we get our audience's attention visually with the snake's head and the snake's tail? Let's look at some examples to get started. Consider this snake's head. Here might be an attention getter for a speech on the advantages and disadvantages of being an identical twin. It's a good visual, it doesn't distract, and it keeps your equilateral triangle equal. It is telling a story. The moment you think about this visual as a attention getter, perhaps you're thinking about what the clincher could look like. Here's how it might end. These are the twins today. These happen to be the speaker's aunts. It's a great, easy, effective way 
to think visually. Here's another example of an attention getter for a persuasive speech on genetically modified babies. The presenter chooses to animate three different pictures that tell the story of modifying, in this particular instance, is toys or games that the audience might be familiar with. So we see Build-A-Bear, American Girl, and the, the Wee Doll. This is visually interesting and is a topic that your audience will identify with. Again, the minute you think about how you visually engage your audience, start thinking about the snake's tail or how you will end it visually on a high note. Perhaps we show a very diverse baby basket, like this one. Here's another example of a snake's head or a series of three pictures that each take up a slide. And it's a speech telling a story that is persuading people that Toyota cars are the best. Take a look at the old slogans and old cars that Toyota used to use and make. Choosing to do a series of images of old cars and slogans is a wonderful visual way to get our attention. These are our snake's head. And it becomes very obvious what our snake's tail should be in this instance. The most current slogan and best-selling current car are of Toyota is a wonderful way to visually end that speech on a high note. So those are some great examples. Now what I'd like to do is offer some tools that you might keep nearby that would be useful in your particular speeches. So perhaps you'd like to consider this first tool, which is the idea of humor. Now only certain people can use humor well, and some topics lend themselves to it. But jokes are very possible and wonderful ways to get your audience's attention. They can be jokes by themselves, but certainly a visual could enhance it. You could tell a humorous anecdote, a humorous quote, a humorous current event. But make sure that it's relevant to your topic, make sure that it's appropriate, and make sure that you can be funny. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the movie Up. In this particular movie, one of the famous lines is this dog getting distracted by a squirrel in the middle of a conversation with this young boy. Speak! Hi there. Look. Did that dog just say hi there? Oh, yes. Bruh! My name is Doug. I have just met you, and I love you. <laughs> My master made me this collar. He is a good and smart master, and he made me this collar so that I may talk. Squirrel! This is a wonderful short video to use for a topic on attention deficit disorder. It's appropriate, it's light, it serves its purpose, and it definitely gets the audience's attention. Another example of a humorous introduction is this picture of Dolly. Dolly was the first cloned sheep. And this was a persuasive speech on genetically modified animals. So we see in the attention getter Dolly's face. And the speaker takes some time to tell us about the process behind Dolly being created. The snake's tail, or the visual that might end us on a high note, was very funny and looked like this. And the speaker spoke above this visual and called us to action against genetically modified animals. A second tool to gain attention is the idea of startling statements. You want to surprise your audience with some startling information about your topic. They can come in the form of statistics or strange facts. And the goal of a good startling statistic is that it surprises the audience to get engaged in your topic. For example, if you're giving a speech about oil conservation, you could start by saying, a Boeing 747 airliner holds 57,285 gallons of fuel. That would certainly be startling to the audience. Or you could start a speech on the psychology of dreams by noting, the average person has over 1,460 dreams a year. 
And if you wanted, you could superimpose a picture behind that quote or that statistic. A strange fact, on the other hand, is a statement that does not involve numbers, but is equally surprising to most audiences. For example, you could start a speech on the gambling industry by saying, there are no clocks in any casinos in Las Vegas. Use a blank slide if you choose not to use a visual to reinforce a startling statement. But if you want to use some visuals, here are some examples. Before I even start to talk about this young man, you are startled. This is an informative speech about a disease that this young man lives with. And the speaker told the story over this visual. Little Prith grew up with a very rare syndrome. Growing up, he was always teased and tormented, and he knew it was because of the absurd amount of hair on his face. He always wanted to fit in and be like other kids, and he never understood why this happened. And then the speaker went on to tell us about the disease. Its clincher was Prith today. Little Prith is growing up now, and he's adapting to di his disorder. He understands that this is part of him, and it's something he is willing to live with. He knows the disorder makes him special and unique. Don't be afraid of being different, he says. Be afraid of being the same as everybody else. So this is a wonderful way to startle. Here is a startling series of images that appeared one at a time in this PowerPoint presentation on how climate change is affecting the Earth. If you look closely at all four quadrants, you are definitely persuaded and startled and want to be engaged in this topic. The concluding slide uses the exact four quadrants but shows what the Earth could look like should we choose to address the issue of climate change. It's a very effective snake's tail. A third tool that might be helpful when trying to gather one's attention or clinch is the idea of personal references. Personal references are ones that come from personal knowledge and experience. You don't want to get carried away with the focus on yourself and your own life. That's not the idea. Your speech topic is the purpose of the attention getter, not the other way around. Another pitfall in using a personal example is that it may be too personal for you to maintain composure. So consider that when using a personal reference. Here are some examples of personal references used in speeches. This looks like a normal bowl of peas. You would normally just grab a spoon and start eating them. Not my brother Sam. He must line them up one by one before he eats them. Everybody washes their hands when they get dirty. Not Sam. He has to wash them five or six times because he still, quote, feels the germs. Everyone makes sure that their garage is shut before they leave the house. My brother Sam cannot get himself to leave the driveway because he is so unsure. So what is wrong with all these people? Why are they so unsure? All these people suffer from obsessive compulsive disorder. Now keep in mind these examples that I'm showing you can be used for either the attention getter or the clincher. Whatever is most effective for your needs. A fourth tool to gain attention is the use of quotes. You're probably used to this one in your writing, and obviously this can be used at the beginning or the end or in combination. My advice is to deliver your quote with an image behind it, and also don't type the quote on the slide. This is a combination of humor and a quote to talk about the speech topic, energy drinks. Here would be a quote that would be said over this slide. Back when I was in college, this former classmate of mine once told me, quote, this morning I put Red Bull in my coffee instead of water, and now I can see noises. My classmate looked like this. It also uses personal reference because it's referring to the presenter's former college roommate. Another example of a tool to gain attention is the use of stories. Stories can be told in first person, like this. 
In the fall of 2008, I decided that it was time that I took my life into my own hands. I decided to take a leap of faith and get gastric bypass in an attempt to finally beat the disease. This is actually both a personal reference and a story told in first person. Sometimes the story can be told in third person though. Here's another example of a story. When most people think of ocean danger, this guy comes to mind. A huge shark that can tear a human being up within minutes. As terrifying as sharks are, I experienced a part of that ocean that was just as frightening. My experience has permanently changed my view on the ocean forever. This past September, I went to Cabo St. Lucas for my cousin's wedding, and while I was there, I was walking along the shore, and an unexpected wave came up and swept me away from the shore. This actually was a speech on the dangers of the ocean. This young lady almost drowned while she was walking along the shore. The shark is used to gather our attention and get us engaged, but she talked about way more than the shark. Her snake's tail, or her visual for ending the speech, looked like this, and she finished her story. After that wave swept me away from the shore, I was terrified. I tried to swim back, but the waves were too powerful and I was simply out of control. I was tumbled and tumbled and water exploded into my ears and mouth and I felt like I was a sock in a washing machine. Finally, a local man jumped over the wave and helped me out of the deathly waters. From that day forward, I vowed never to go near the ocean again. Another typical tool to gain attention is the idea of suspense. This notion keeps the listener in suspense about your topic until later in the introduction. Often a series of suspenseful facts are presented to keep you hanging. So one person talked about the dangers of the Super Bowl in great detail. And guess what this speech was really on? Human trafficking. Super Bowl is the most busy place for human trafficking, and the speaker got us interested by talking about the Super Bowl. Or perhaps you want to show this visual and try a suspenseful trick like this. A sense of fear has recently come over Americans in the last couple of months. This fear isn't from the recent acts of terror from groups like ISIS or from endless news of violent outbreaks or from the political ads slandering our current politicians and their dark secrets. It comes from the spread of the Ebola virus to the United States. So we were really kept in suspense about what the topic was until the very end. The clincher might include a picture with this orally recited on top. When a little bit of time is taken to learn the strict facts of the Ebola virus, we find that Americans really don't have that much to fear. So, the next time the media acts hysterical about the virus, we'll be able to pick out the important facts that are being presented and block the fear from coming into our lives. The use of a definition as a tool for an attention getter should be used sparingly, but can be very effective. This young man chooses to define architecture, and he puts this visual behind his definition. Architecture is defined as the art or practice of designing and constructing buildings. So it's very important for this presenter to define his idea of what architecture means to him. Defining it makes it clear to the audience and helps us understand the information that this presenter is sharing. In keeping with art and architecture, this presenter does his clincher visually by showing this wonderful shot and by saying this. Architecture of the past is never forgotten and its influence can be seen even today in the most modern architectural styles. It is the legacy of past civilizations and acts as a glimpse into part of our history through characteristics that display the ingenuity and creativity of that time. The last item on my list is the last item on my list because I think it's the weakest item on my list and the most overused. It's the idea of using questions as an attention getter. Here's an example of a question. What do Albert Einstein, Susan Boyle, and Isaac Newton all have in common? 
Yes, they all have really amazing hair. And yes, they are all very talented in their fields. But you might be surprised to know that they all have some form of autism. So this is a fair way to get our attention. But later in this presentation, I'll show you a significantly better way to introduce a speech on autism. So I just asked you to consider other options. Those other options might include a song. A song is very out of the box. And if you are not a singer, that's okay. You can find great songs on YouTube or Spotify that could definitely enhance your introduction. Take a look at this Coca-Cola commercial that was a wonderful introduction for a speech on marketing of Coca-Cola products. I like to buy the world a home and furnish it with love. Grow apple trees and honeybees and so white turtle doves. The speaker chose to play only a few seconds of this to gather our attention. The diversity, the catchy tune, and the different time frame were fascinating and engaging to the audience. If a song isn't your thing, maybe you'd like to consider a poem or a book. Simply Google your topic and write the word poem after it and see if something comes up. Or Google your topic and write the word song or book. You'd be surprised all the options that might appear. For example, a persuasive speech that everybody should plant a tree was beautifully presented by sharing this opening page of a famous book by Shel Silverstein called The Giving Tree. You can imagine, if you're familiar with this book, how this presenter chose to end this presentation. They went to the back of the book. And if you recall, the back of the book was strictly the tree's stump. But that tree kept on giving because the old man could sit on the stump and rest. So it was a wonderful use of a book to carry the message that everybody should plant a tree. The idea of autism is introduced beautifully in this example of a children's book. Imagine you've crash landed on an alien planet. It looks like Earth, but there's a lot of differences. A lot of people seem to talk loudly, and even though you speak the same language, sometimes you have a hard time understanding what they mean. And things that seem hilarious to you aren't funny at all. You wish scientists had given you a guidebook to this strange planet, but they forgot to pack one, so you're kind of forced to figure things out on your own. This speech, again, was on autism, and they used Arthur, a children's book, to get our attention. This is a markedly better choice than the use of questions mentioned earlier. They concluded their speech by wrapping up and doing some final slides from the end of the book. You still don't completely understand this strange new planet you've crashed on. Maybe there's one thing in particular that captures your interest, and you just study that. Hopefully, the people on your planet begin to understand you a little bit better. And you might even learn to fit in. But you always feel a little different. This other very interesting way to gather attention is the use of stylistic devices. Often, we only think of using stylistic devices when we're writing. That's the idea of similes, metaphors, personification alliteration, antithesis, repetition, etc. Some of the best orators use style, and it helps to show your information rather than just tell it. Remember the presenter before who said she felt like a sock being tumbled around in a washing machine? That was a great way to show how she felt when she was being swept away by the waves. Your words can become paintbrushes. Remember when I presented not my brother Sam, in the earlier speech on OCD, that was a use of repetition, similar to the famous I have a dream speech. 
And John F. Kennedy uses a stylistic devices throughout almost all of his speeches, which is called an antithesis. Ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. These are wonderful techniques to deliberately try to include in your speech, especially in your introduction or conclusion. Let's take a look at some examples. This was a speech on the dangers of plastic surgery. Imagine your lips were sewn together like the hem of an old pair of pants. Imagine your upper thighs are craters filled with cotton balls and medicine where skin used to be. Imagine a blistering, bulbous, bulging nose that was once smooth, soft, and subtle skin. This includes repetition of the word imagine. It also includes a simile, a metaphor, and alliteration. Now, you don't need to include so many, but for example purposes, this was shared with you. Words can be like paintbrushes, and people can hear beauty in those sounds. But don't overdo it. When all else fails, if you are trying to find an attention getter or a clincher, my recommendation is that you put your topic in Google and look at everything it has to offer. Videos, the web, and especially images. When you find any images in Google, oftentimes they can spark an idea that you can use to utilize any of the tools offered in this presentation. We'd love to help you further in the writing, reading, speech assistance area. Feel free to join us for a one-to-one -one coaching. Thanks for listening. <music>